Hi, I'm Brent Johnson, and today I'm in Plattsburgh, Missouri. This is a small town uh, in western Missouri, not far from Kansas City and St. Joseph. We've come to St. Anne's Catholic Church. Now, this historic parish dates back as far as 1866, and this current building was completed in 1888. An organ by the J.G. Pfeffer Company of St. Louis was installed in 1902, but sadly that instrument was removed sometime in the 20th century, and nobody seems to know what happened to it. Through the years, many of the church's decorations were covered up and almost forgotten about as well. Father Eric Schneider is the current pastor of this church, and he's led a remarkable effort to return this church to its former appearance, and he wanted to bring a pipe organ back into the building as well. Well, we were able to locate uh, one of our families here has owned the newspaper in town for almost 60 years and they have kept all of the archives and actually the leather bound books and he was able to locate um, the 1907 photo of the pastor's 25th anniversary here in Plattsburgh and we were able to see the sanctuary with all of its elaborate stenciling and that kind of got us going on. Uh, we could do this again. <laughs> we, actually, we actually knew what it looked like then after that. I finally found that it was about February 14th or 16th of 1902 um, that the J.G. Pfeffer organ was installed here in St. Anne's, and I, I think it was a bequest of a particular family at that time that enabled the pastor to finally get a real pipe organ in here. I imagine they had a pump organ before, I'm not exactly sure, uh, but that began the journey to try to discover exactly how we could put something historical back in here again. Well, I kind of called around to several different companies that do historic organs uh, and refurbish them and I got a call from Ryan Lucky and he said, you know, I think I have something you might be interested in. There's a 1901 J.G. Pfeffer in a closed Lutheran church in Scribner, Nebraska and it's not for sale on the internet and I thought, well, this is God's divine intervention. I said, I said tell me, is this kind of one in a million? And he said, yes, basically it is. My name is Ryan Lucky, and I am the uh, Vice President and Project Manager at Bedient Pipe Organ. I knew that there had been an organ, I read about it in a newspaper clipping or something a long, long time ago in an article. I was talking about this with Rosalind Monson, uh, who's an organist in Boston, but she's originally from Northeast Nebraska. And so she gave me the contact information, and I sent out eight or nine letters to different people and different groups trying to find out more information. and. Um, got a call back from Roger Damas, who is the caretaker of the church. So I got in touch with him and he said, yeah, the organ is still there and it's playable and it, it's, you can come check it out sometime if you like. And so I was in the area one day about two years ago, made the trip out here and visited the church and saw the organ. And I thought, wow, this is really special. This is something that um, we, need to, we need to save and we need to find a good home for it where people can appreciate it. And then, um, one day got an email out of the blue from um, Father Schneider down in Missouri and he was looking for something just like this and and so this all fell into place and worked out really well. So in the summer of 2022 crews from Bedient arrived in the even smaller town of Scribner, Nebraska to begin the retrieval of this J.G. Pfeffer organ from Trinity Lutheran Church. That organ was built in 1901, just a year before St. Anne's original instrument. A builder from Pfeffer Shop in St. Louis had arrived in Scribner on August 14, 1901, and a nearby newspaper reported that the organ was finished on August 17th, in time for the dedication of the church building in September of that year. The new organ cost the church $800. Set the, the small ones let you set maybe down front under the hymn boards or something.
As the BDN crew disassembled the organ, the process was carefully documented, every part labeled and every step recorded. So in the early 1970s, the original wind system was taken out um, and the bellows were discarded and the, this new reservoir was installed and, along with a Liebler Cadet action. Uh, and so we're gonna, the plan is to do away with all of that, build a new double rise reservoir in the style of Pfeffer, uh, hopefully adding feeder bellows become a part of that plan. Alright, so all of these extra components we're just going to tear out and not really pay much attention to right now, so um, that part should go pretty quickly. Um. So in, in the first day, we uh, set up all of our equipment. Uh, we've got quite a bit of stuff that goes along with an organ removal like this. Uh, so we got all of that set up and ready to go, and then we got all of the pipes packed. Those are all packed into trays uh, and ready to load onto the truck, transport back to Lincoln. And uh, we also had a lot of the swell box disassembled. Um, we, the, the swell shade front was still in place but the sides and the back were all down and it was a matter of a few screws to take out to get the, the swell front down. So um, we decided that was a good stopping point and saved our energy for the next day to remove the swell front. Ready to go down? Yep. Good. Just be really careful not to uh, crystal your end down faster. Yeah. There we go. Keep it. Keep it level. Yep.
In order to remove the largest parts of the organ, the Bedient crew set up a winch to lift, carry, and lower parts over the edge of the balcony. With the manual chest, the largest part of the organ removed, the disassembly and packing of the remainder of the action, console, and case of the organ proceeded quickly. We are planning a complete restoration um, for this organ, uh, repairing anything that needs to be repaired. Uh, some work was done on the wind chest um, back in the 1970s. There were cracks and runs in the table. Um, those had been repaired, but we'll need to really get into the wind chest to find out if it's worth keeping those or if we need to do some more extensive work on the wind chest. Um, but all of, all of the leather will be replaced, new pallets in the wind chest, uh, new stoppers in the flute, those are in pretty bad shape. Um, and we're, we're also going to do some major reconstructive work on the wind system. Uh, there's also some pipe repair. Uh, a number of pipes have been either damaged or collapsed. Um, I know birds had gotten in there for, for a number of years and so there's some, there's some pipe repair that needs to be done too, but we're planning a complete top to bottom restoration of this instrument. In October of 2023, the organ arrived in Plattsburgh and reassembly began. The documentation from the disassembly was largely followed in reverse to make sure everything went back together exactly as it came apart. Even some of the footage used in this video was referenced to make sure things went back in correctly. At Trinity Lutheran, the organ was centered in the rear, rear balcony, um, but in the new location, it will be situated in a corner. And so we will not have access to the, through the back of the organ or through the, um, the left-hand side as you're seated at the key desk. Uh, but fortunately on a Pfeffer, the uh, side panels all come off very easily for access, so that shouldn't be a problem to get in uh, under the under the organ to service the wind system. Uh, we will need to make a small door to go into the top part of the case. There will be a very narrow opening where we will be able to get through to tune, um, but I consider that to be a relatively minor change. In our shop, we went through um, pretty meticulously part by part. Everything got cleaned. Um, all of the pipes were washed. We fitted them with new uh, stainless steel tuning slides. Um, those replaced the aluminum ones that had been installed in the 70s. Um, it turns out there was quite a bit of repair, I won't say restoration work, but repair work that was done in the 70s. Uh, and so some of that we reversed and some of it we improved upon. Um, but the pipes were all cleaned and washed, the stoppers were re-leathered, of course. Uh, the wind chest got a complete makeover. Um, we retabled it, which means we took off the top layer of the grid inside the wind chest, uh, replaced it with a new uh, plywood uh, table. And the reason for that is the um, original solid wood table had cracked in numerous places. 
In the 70s, they fixed those cracks by attacking it with a circular saw, basically, cutting splines to remove the cracks and then uh, filling in with a, with a wooden spline in the, in the saw kerf. So uh, that was rather crudely done in place. Um, and so we reversed or undid that, I guess, by um, installing the new uh, plywood table. Uh, we also ended up doing a lot of work on the pallets and inside the pallet box. The um, pallets were also modified. Uh, one of the things that Pfeffer did was glue his pallets into the wind chest. The, the other way that they would have been attached is with a pin at the tail and you'd have, he would have had to have moved the, the spring to the center of the pallet in order to hold it shut. But instead with the pallet tail glued in, then the spring is further forward and, and that affects how it feels for the organist. Um, and so we, we weren't able to move the spring location, um, but we added an extra spring, an extra compass spring at the back of the pallet to hold it shut. And so everything feels the same for the organist. It's just now there's a, a, an extra spring and a pin uh, that hold the pallet in. Um, one of the things in the 70s that they did, they did a similar thing, but they used a large coil spring at the back. And that was also crudely done. But in addition to that, they sawed away about a third of the mass of the pallet in back, trying to make it lighter so that it would be held shut and not, and not cipher. Um, and in doing so, they made the pallet so thin that we could not flatten them. And so we had to make brand new pallets, um, replicated Pfeffer's dimensions and size and shape and everything as closely as possible, with the exception of adding an extra little bit of wood at the end so we would have a place to put a pin. So that makes the, the new pallets are completely removable. We made them of quarter sawn Alaskan cedar, um, like we do with all of the pallets in all of our mechanical action organs. And so we're pretty confident that these pallets are, are as close to Pfeffer's design as original, but with the slight modification of making them removable. The winding system on this organ was a very unique and fun project. We went through the process of replicating and recreating the double rise reservoir with the feeder bellows under it. And we, we did that by looking at a couple of um, existing Pfeffer's uh, in our area in Nebraska that still have their original wind system. And so we got some basic measurements from that, but we also looked at the evidence inside this organ, uh, vacant screw holes, brackets that would have been attached to the reservoir that we still had. And using that information, we were able to come, I believe within just a few millimeters of making it exactly the size, shape and location that the original was in. And so, uh, in addition to the double rise reservoir, we also uh, built the feeder bellows. And so once again, the organ can be pumped manually as it was originally. Uh, the only ch other change with that, originally the pump handle came out on the left side of the organ. Uh, but now, of course, as you see in this installation, it's in a, in a left corner. And so we had to make the handle come out the right hand side. But other than that, it, the wind system functions just as it did when it left Pfeffer's shop.
so far on the first day, we got the lower case all put together. Uh, the wind system is in place, although the wind, wind trunks and things aren't quite hooked up yet, and uh, the guys are installing the pedal trackers. Uh, those go under the, the wind reservoir, and of course that has to get done before we build too much else up on top of it while we can still have access to it. So that's what they're working on now. Hopefully today we'll get the wind, wind chest itself in, the main manual chest, and start building the upper case around it. So it should be a productive day. Towards you, right? Up, up, tilt forward. Okay. Right. Go ahead and pick up. Ready? Yep. One, two, three. Good over so here. Timothy and Chris, we need to keep it kind of level. So if you guys can, there we go. Down. Down. All right. You're on the Down. two by four. Down. We're on the two by yeah. fours. Praises be to Jesus. How about that?
Uh, once we get everything installed here physically, that's our goal for this week is to get the parts and components functioning mechanically. Uh, and then next week we return uh, to put in the pipes. And uh, because the wind chest is so large, we're going to only put in a few ranks at a time and sort of tune and voice our way out. Um, so that, that will take the better part of next week as well. So the voicing and regulating process will be interesting because we want to preserve the character of Pfeffer's sound, uh, but we're also now in a much smaller uh, church building, and so we'll have to see what we can do to balance the sound of the organ with the room and make it sound its best. The, the only surprises we encountered were discovering all the things that were done in the 70s. There were, you know, not just the things in the wind chest, but other things that were done, you know, whether it be crudely made brackets or, or other things like that. Uh, things that were done in the 70s that, that we ended up undoing and just kind of shook our head and said, why did they do it that way? But on the other hand, it, well, it's easy to look at something like that and say, why did they do that? It's terrible that they did that to this organ. But on the other hand, it kept the organ playable. And the other option was to throw it out and, and lose this piece of history and this fine instrument. So in a way, I'm, I'm glad they kept it going. And I'm also glad for the opportunity to rebuild it and make it right as best we can. Well, so here we are. The organ is complete and it's in. Uh, we have a total of nine ranks. All of it is inside of a box, uh, save for the lowest part of the open diapason, which is out here in the facade. So here is the eight foot open diapason. And it's uh, the bottom octave and a few notes that are outside here. So everything up here, of course, can be closed down. mechanical swell box. It's very light, very easy to use. Uh, then we have a four-foot octave that goes on top of that, just for comparison. With the eight-foot. And there's a two-foot then on top of that. Fifteenth. There's also a two and two thirds twelfth, so we can add to the mixture. Brightness to it. Just playing around here. Let's see. Here's 
uh, eight and two and two thirds. Of course, nothing's divided. It's all full compass on every stop. So it, uh, you can't use that as a solo stop. So you've always got that on there if you want to use it in the ensemble. Here's eight, four, and two and two thirds. Nice big full sound. Um, so also we have an eight foot gedeck. It's closed, only closed. Lovely. Um, there is a four foot flute that then can go on top of that. It's open flute harmonic there. With the eight foot. Uh, and then um, we have an eight foot gamba, and I love this one. Now, the bottom octave, I believe those are pipes that were manufactured for this uh, installation. They used to be stopped and then open pipes were put in. Uh, these are new pipes, but I could be wrong about that. Uh, we also have, wouldn't be a Pfeffer organ without an eight-foot Dulciana. Close that down very nicely. That also, I believe it shares its base. No. And the base of this is also smaller pipes, stop pipes or something. Very nice. And then, of course, in the back we have one 16 foot sub base. full pedal sound there. So with the gedeckt. And then we have one pedal coupler to couple everything together. Fluting gamba. it open just to hear all the eights together. Nice big sound there. Um, and uh, just playing around a little more. Here's here's the gamba and the four foot flute. together really well. Just a dulciana and the four foot flute. I like that too. It uh, adds a little bit of just adds a little bit of something to the flute. Here's a four foot octave and the gambo just pulling stops now. But these all work together so uh, here's the gedeckt and the two and two thirds. together remarkably well even in combinations you wouldn't expect so everything's voiced very nicely together there was as I understand it very little tonal finishing that happened uh, to bring it in here uh, it, it was of course they did go through things when it was being installed but the organ just kind of sounds perfect for this room and it makes sense this is about the exact same size as the organ that was here before from what they know uh, and uh, it just works really well
The congregation is very proud of the work that we've accomplished together. Um, through, the, uh, through the grace of God, this small town and this small parish was able to completely restore uh, this church to its former glory. Um, it's a Victorian Gothic glory from uh, the uh, 1890s. The, the parish loves the, loves the pipe organ here and um, we use it at every Sunday Mass. You know, I just, uh, I marvel at the craftsmanship of how something like that would have been put together because um, when we found the original newspaper article, it just was one sentence in there and it finally told us what this organ was because we had researched and researched not knowing whether it would have been a Hinners, is that right? Uh, or something like that because the train track um, came off in this town probably about two blocks north of the church. So you could imagine you know, they would have shipped it here uh, in 1901 and then you know, the specialist would have met to install it. And that's all we found is the J.G. Pfeffer Organ Company is in the Catholic Church. If anyone else in town is interested in a pipe organ, please stop by Saturday night. It's like, okay, finally the mystery is solved about what we, what, what we, what we had in here. And um, you know, so I just, uh, I think it's so very special that we're not only able to have an historic instrument, but that it was able to be completely restored. And very providentially, um, the paintwork on the pipe matches pretty much everything in here, and that was not planned. So it was just meant to be here. It was really meant to be here in this building. So I hope you've enjoyed the, the journey we've been on with this amazing Pfeffer organ from 1902, uh, making its way from a closed church here to one that's very vibrant and active and is having another life again. This is, took us a year and a half to put this together, so uh, it's great to see the instrument here finally playing and to bring this to you. Father Schneider extends an invitation to any organist who would like to come play this organ. If you want to come play a concert, they would love to have you here in Plattsburgh at St. Anne. So reach out to them. There's information about the church down in the description. Uh, while you're down there, if you enjoyed watching this video, then please click the thumbs up button. And if you'd like to help us make more and find great instruments like this, well, we can do that with your support. We depend on the support of our sponsors to help us make videos like this one. So just go to organ.media, which is our new website, and right there on the front page, there is a place where you can donate your support and help us make more videos. So thank you to all of our sponsors this year who've helped us follow this organ from Nebraska to Missouri. So I'm going to enjoy playing this organ a little more now. Um, until next time, I'm Brett Johnson. Thanks for watching.